name's Scott Baker. I write for Xbox Live Arcade fans or XBLA fans. I've been doing that for about three years. Okay, um, so why are you at Boston Fig? Um, indie games are, you know, the biggest frontier, like a huge frontier in games right now. It used to be, when I was a kid, it was the really big games and then the big games that weren't quite as big but still pretty big. And now it's, you have the really big games and usually it's then just the indie games underneath that. And there's so many of them that have so many great ideas. And uh, the best way to see them is to go straight to the source. So that's why I'm here. So, you know, you write for Xbox Live Arcade. Mm -hmm. you, you focus on Xbox Live Arcade games. I'm guessing. Yes. So yes. why why did you want to focus on Xbox Live Arcade games? Um, the site, I mean, when when the Xbox 360 came out, um, really, before the AAA games came in, it was Xbox Live Arcade that really carried the system. And there are a lot of times, especially with some of our arcade promotions, that you know people would always talk about the really big games, but Xbox Live Arcade as well would you see some amazing things. And sometimes they'd be, you know that they can say that I'm a big fan of Shadow Complex, one of my favorite games there, but a lot of other little games, games like Bastion, uh, really wow people because of great ideas that haven't been done before. So, um, with, and now, it's a bit different now with the Xbox One and it's just Xbox games, um, but it's still, it's still where all, you see a lot of great ideas coming uh, that change games later on too. Do you, do you think that Microsoft has been uh, really supporting indie games, or do you think that they haven't done as much as they could? Or we've talked, a, yeah, we've talked a lot with Microsoft and a lot of different developers that worked with them before, and some of them has been great. There's been a lot of stink stories out there too with certain developers, and really that that came full circle, I think, with the ID at Xbox program. That and and they've been they're really pushing that as well. They they say that they love indie developers. They want to try to make it as little barrier of entry as possible for, de for developers there. So um, in the past, though, I know that it's it's what's funny now is that to publish on ID at Xbox, of course, they have all the gates open, everybody can come in. Um, but if you want to publish on Xbox Live Arcade, you still have to go with the publisher. That happened to Drinkbox Studios with Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition. Um, but it's still definitely improving a lot, and uh, it's it's really important these days because that's where, especially with the the new the release of the new consoles, um, it's the indie games that really pad out the releases between the big games. Should the average gamer care about the games at Boston Fig? I, I really I really hope they do. I wish that they would because um, there's there's so much there's so much more to gaming than than just Call of Duty, <laughs> you know, uh, than just Madden. Love those games; they're fantastic. Um, but really, in, in indie games where people can be much more experimental, much more creative, um, and much more artistic, I think. And so to to miss out on those would be a, a big shame. Okay. Do you think that publishers and AAA studios should care about the games at Boston Fig? Absolutely. Um, the, it's funny, actually, we hear about a lot of uh, high-profile developers that leave um, their massive studios to go do their own thing. Um, and I think uh, uh, a lot of... It, it's because there's so much creativity to, to explore when you can just, when just by yourself. It's, it, it can be difficult, of course, um, to get noticed, I think, but still, there's so much to it um, that when when it's just yourself to find your own ideas and um, and and push those boundaries yourself. That's you can, a lot of things that otherwise people might be too afraid to express because of what the mass market demands or whatever. Um, when people are much more free to express, you can get some really great ideas that otherwise would never never come to be. Are there any games that you're really looking forward to getting a chance to look at here? Yeah, I'm. Um, there's there's a lot of great mobile games here. I'm here with XBLA fans, so I'm trying to look at what's coming to console. And of course, it's still a bit difficult to 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 get to console. I've already spoken with a few to set up some appointments, and it's always difficult because uh, you have to take into account the development time to to port a game to to a console. Um, but I'm really looking forward to trying Never Alone. Um, that one's been getting a lot, of, a lot of interesting press. Just the idea of preserving culture through games that's never really been done before. Um, I'm also hoping to um, see games like High Strangeness and um, Equilibrium, I think. That, that was the uh, from uh, New York University, I think. That one looks really interesting as well. Yeah, I really can't wait to get my hands on those. If someone wants to read some of your work or learn more about your work, where would they go? Yeah, you, you can follow me on Twitter, at Scottish Bakery. And um, I'm also on xbillafans.com. If 
you want to see just my stuff, you can xbaileyfans.com slash authors slash scott dash baker. Um, and, but if you follow me on Twitter, you can hear my musings and what I, what I think about the world and things like that. Yeah, give me a follow. And I occasionally stream on Twitch, too. Oh, that's right. I do also stream on XBLA Fans uh, Twitch. You can follow XBLA Fans Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash XBLA Fans. And we do try to do weekly streams of uh, indie games that are coming out.